Sponsored by the Committee on the Guam U.S. Military Relocation, Public Safety, and Judiciary is hereby convened. On the agenda, we have Bill Number 176, that's 33, LS, which is relative to the classification of personnel vital to the protection of Guam's natural resources. Just for the information of the public, the notification in compliance with the open government law was disseminated on the 15th. Uh, the initial information or notification was disseminated on the 15th of September. And then the second notice that went out to our public, to the senators and to our media uh, partners and the stakeholders also was sent out subsequent to that on the 17th. We do have, like I mentioned, uh, one particular measure on the agenda this afternoon. I'd like to recognize my colleagues who have joined, joined us this, this afternoon. To my immediate right is Senator Rory Spicio, who is the chairman of the Department of Agriculture Oversight. To my immediate left is Senator Nerissa Underwood, and to her immediate left is Senator Dennis Rodriguez. Uh, as was mentioned a little earlier, we do have that, that one particular legislative measure that we will be entertaining. If I call your name, and you would like to present either written or oral testimony, please join us in the front, okay? I, I noticed that in the past there's been a number of our people in the audience who have signed up in just to express their support or their opposition to a measure, but did not want to orally testify. So I will give, extend that courtesy to you. So before I identify the sponsor of the legislation, I'd like to invite, uh, obviously, the director, Mr. Massablon, uh, Ms. Jane Deha and Joe Mofnes, who has already made himself, uh, provided his own personal accommodations and he's already at the table. And then Mr. <laughs> Michael Rages. <laughs> they're, they're just overexcited. <laughs> Mr. Director, before I recognize you, I'd like to yield to the sponsor of Bill Number 176, that's 33, Senator Dennis Rodriguez. Senator? Afade, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman, and good afternoon to everybody. Um, Bill 176 is um, very similar to a provision that we had um, included in the fiscal year 2015 um, Budget Act, which, which we are um, operating on this year, up to the end of this month. And uh, what it does is allocate a certain amount, in this case, 367238 which is an amount that was provided by the um, Department of Agriculture, and which is the allocation um, to uh, ensure the salaries and benefits of the eight uh, forestry aid officers and three conservation officers are, are, are set aside and maintained for fiscal year 2016. Um, for this fiscal year, we did that during um, floor discussion um, during the budget uh, session. And so we, we, we had that, we put that in, in response again to um, the Department of Agriculture's request to ensure we do that, right? Because I, I understand that these individuals were on a limited term appointment, and so we wanted to make sure that the service they provide to the public um, is not interrupted, and so that was, um, uh, that was made during that budget session. Uh, we were also told and assured during that time that after, um, after that was incorporated, the department now would, um, would initiate the, the process of permanizing um, these individuals into these positions. However, um, we understand that uh, that hasn't happened, I think maybe for the past uh, to two years maybe, uh, it, it, and th that hasn't happened. And uh, we're afraid, um, concerned that now that, um, again, we are in this situation where the department has not acted on permanizing uh, these positions. And so um, what this bill calls for is, number one, to ensure that the service of pro um, protecting, protecting our Guam's natural resources are not interrupted. Um, and hopefully if we can get this on before the start of the fiscal year, um, then, um, then we can be assured of that. But also, um, the second aspect of this is ensuring that now we, um, we permanize these individuals who have been occupying these positions for, I believe, two years, two or, or even three years maybe, right? So um, that's, that's what this um, measure does, Mr. Chairman. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Senator Rodriguez. And the first individual uh, I'd like to identify is the director, Mr. Sablon. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, buenos and Alpha Day, Senator Rispichu, Oversight uh, Committee for Agriculture. Uh, Senator Frank Ungan Jr., uh, uh, what if, for introducing this, this bill, and also to <coughs> Senator Rodriguez. Uh, Senator Underwood, thank you for giving me the opportunity. 
Uh, my name is Matthew Longoero Sablan, Director of the Guam Department of Agriculture. And along with my Deputy Director, Mr. Jesse B. Pelican, and the rest of the employees of the department, we are thankful for the opportunity given today to testify in support of Bill 176-33. We would like to express our appreciation to Senator Dennis Rodriguez, Senator Rory Respichu, Senator Frank Algum Jr. for sponsoring and introducing this bill, which would classify com competitive limited term appointments for three conservation recruit positions and up to eight forestry aid positions with no interruption in service which is vital to enforcing Guam's laws and regulations for the protection of fish, wildlife, endangered and threatened species and forestry laws. The Department's Conservation Law Enforcement Section along with the Forestry and Soils Resource Division is in dire need in classifying these trained and experienced employees to effectively continue the protection of our island of Guam's natural resources. In closing, we humbly ask the members of the 33rd Guam Legislature for your favorable consideration in the passage of Bill 176-33. Thank you, Sisu Smatsi. Thank you very much, Mr. Sablan. Ms. Dia, if you can please identify yourself for the record and proceed. Jane Dia, Resource Information and Education Officer uh, within the Division of Aquatic and Wildlife Resources at the Guam Department of Agriculture. Um, Hafa Day, Senators, thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, I'm a campaign manager for a marine preserve campaign called PD Pride to Pugin White, and some of the outcomes of that was having um, the community do a pre and post survey where they identified threats to the natural resource management of the uh, PD bomb holes preserve. And so one of the recommendations from the public and um, the community was an increase in enforcement. And they felt that out of all the activities, that would be something they would need. And so in support of that, um, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife um, Sport Fish Restoration um, Grant um, afforded us to uh, move forward with the program. And also a nonprofit organization from the states called RARE uh, um, funded a lot of the activities for this campaign, as well as the University of Guam Sea Grant. And so there was a lot of investment for this program, which, um, which needed the support of law enforcement. We could not have done this campaign without law enforcement. And the success of the campaign is um, a hotline that was developed. So there was a greater increase in communication with the public and the community to our law enforcement. They had an increase in patrols. The funding sources were able to get them um, much needed repairs for equipment so they can continue those patrols. And so going forward, the uh, conservation recruits um, have had training and we were almost able to give them more training if they were classified employees. So the nonprofit organization had it as one of their um, um, requirements to give them more funding for different training. But because they weren't um, classified, we had to just um, table that for another time. So um, in, in closing, we, it was really important that we had law enforcement uh, numbers. We needed an increase in force. And having a break in that kind of service with, um, um, you know, with the budget not being approved, you know, it would impact the community's um, perception of the support because we went forward with the campaign saying that law enforcement would be there. And so it is really important for us. And also, um, going forward, we're, we're extending to Tumon Bay, and we, we need more um, um, presence. And so, you know, reducing the numbers would really impact the beginning of this um, other uh, Tumon campaign. So, you know, I just think, you know, I, I'm grateful for their 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 efforts because not only that they were able to give us a lot of needed data and the data they collected between three years um, they're able to do better management practices and also it's a good tool to give back to our community and say what they have been doing and so um, I really am in favor for this opportunity for them to have just the continued service as well as our um, forestry aids 
because we do a ridge to reef approach to conservation and their support really impacts our efforts for fisheries management and so you know we really do need all of these uh, manpowers in our in our agency and service so thank you so much for this opportunity thank you very much Ms. Dia for your testimony this afternoon Mr. Moffis Poverty Senator Ogan, Chairman uh, Ogan, uh, Senator uh, Rodriguez, Senator Underwood, and uh, Natural Resource uh, Chair uh, Senator Respichu. Uh, Hope day and thank you. My name is Joe Moffis. I'm the Chief of the Forestry Division at the Department of Agriculture. And I want to thank you guys today for having us here to testify on Bill 176-33, an act to add an, a new item 5 to subsection 0, section 1, chapter Five of Public Law 3366 relative to the classification of personnel by the protection of our Guam natural resource, natural resources. Obviously, I'm here today to testify in support of this bill. In 2008, the U.S. Farm Bill was passed requiring all state forestry agencies to develop and implement a statewide assessment and resource strategy plan, now known as our State Action Plan or Force Action Plan. And this was to be implemented in 2010. In 2010. This plan identified six priority issues face, we are facing here in Guam. One is wildland fire and public safety, water quality and water supply, population growth and urbanization, deforestation of native forests, urban forest sustainability, and degraded lands. It also identified at the time of the report our program capacity of six forestry aid and future, forestry, uh, future program needs of at least 16 additional forestry aid uh, uh, personnel and a cooperative fire program manager to adequately implement our, our state action plan. Since the plan was written, we have lo we lost our administrative assist uh, administrative support and, uh, and one forestry aid, bringing our, our, our forestry aid at that time to six. But today I'm happy to report that we finally recruited our administrative assistant and with the, like what Senator Rodriguez uh, said earlier uh, in that bill in 2015, the eight forestry aid positions. So we've got, we finally got these guys on board, uh, which is the dis topic of discussion for today's uh, hearing and along with conservation recruits. To implement our action plan, we, had, we have four core programs that is supported through funding by the U.S. Forest Service. These are one, our forest stewardship, prog uh, forest stewardship program, which pr we provide technical assistance and trees free of charge to landowners, farmers, ran ranchers, and land trust recipients to assist them in mitigating conservation issues such as providing trees to address windbreak, soil erosion, and agroforestry practices. We have provided thousands of trees to numerous cooperators throughout the years in collaboration with the USDA Natural Resource Conservation Office to support their uh, environmental quality incentive program, EQIP, a program that's available to our local farmers and ranchers. Uh, we have a large project coming up this October in Marisa in the Manel Gales watershed. Um, in that area, wildland fires, Wildland fire, soil erosion, and flooding are impacting the residents in this area. Um, this past dry, dry season, there was a large fire that went to that area. And I had a chance to speak to one of the, the residents there. And uh, he, was, he told me that he had to evacuate his house because his daughter had asthma. And because of the smoke, he had to, he had to evacuate his home. Um, the work that we're, gonna, we're proposing to, to be conducted down, uh, down in this area is to, plan, is to plant about 2,000 uh, acacia uh, seedlings uh, in, in, in our efforts to address the wildland fires, the soil erosion, the flooding that's occurring down in that area. So, the, so in the future, these families will not have to evacuate the, their, their homes because of the fires. Fires are reoccurring in that, that area every, just about every year. In our four self programs, you know, we've got the rhino beetles, we've got the little fire ants, and the Asian psychic scales. What more can I say about these, these issues? Uh, the movement and importation of food, building supplies, and everything else under the sun, we are at risk of impacting our native forest and farm production. We see the damage the rhino beetles have done to our coconut trees. The Asian cycad scale has decimated centuries-old uh, cycads or fadang in, in the wild. And the little pharaon is and will be, a pro be, will be problematic in the future. If not adequately addressed, farmers, hikers, nature lovers, and our tourists will be impacted. To address these issues, we have collaborated with numerous local and federal agencies to get support from the Forest Service to fund the CRB program, the Little Fire Ant program, the Asian Psychic Scale Research, and more recently, the Guam Plant Extinction Prevention Program, 
it, that's, that's a mouthful, but as the name suggests, we are trying to prevent the extinction, the extinction of our native uh, and indigenous uh, trees. In our urban community forestry program, this program provides technical, financial, training, education, and outreach, outreach services to local, federal, and nonprofit organizations in the form of providing trees for green spaces in the uh, urban landscapes, training on tree climbing and pruning, tree hazard assessments, and tree arbor certification. We have co coordinated with our federal counterparts to bring out these trains for our local partners, utility agencies, Department of Parks and Recreation, DPW, GPA, and the University of Guam, so they can have the knowledge and skills to better care for their trees in their respective areas, so we can enjoy the benefits of trees in the urban landscapes, which makes the areas cooler, uh, improves air quality, reduces stormwater runoff, increase land value, reduces noise pollution, and supports our tourism industry. As, and it just makes us come out and enjoy nature. You know, I, I have many people coming into my, and, and organizations coming into my office requesting for support and guidance on proper care, maintenance, and pruning of trees. Expressing safety concerns for large trees because as you know in recent years, in the urban landscape we have been, trees in the urban landscapes have impacted our lives in a very traumatic way, damaging property and infrastructure and even lives. Far too many times I've been asked to allow for the total removal of large trees because of the fear that it may cause harm. The reality is if we simply take proper care of these trees, we do not need to sacrifice these large trees. These trees are an integral part of our community and our tourism industry. So we need to continue to corp incorporate them into the landscapes so we can continue to provide, and so we will continue to provide training opportunities to our partner agencies so these trees in the urban landscapes will be safer for, for, for all to enjoy. In our cooperative fire program, uh, yes, we do have a, a small firefighting unit. Uh, during, the, during the dry seasons, wildland fires are almost a daily occurrence. This past dry season, we only had five personnel responding to fires. There are times where staff do not show up for duty <coughs> due to illness or other reasons, exposing our personnel to greater risk. Recognizing this shortfall, and through our cooperative fire program with the Forest Service, we established an MOU with the Guam Fire Department to collaborate in our suppression efforts. This allowed us to leverage federal assets via our Federal Excess Personal Property Program, which provided GFD with needed firefighting equipment and tools necessary to respond not only to wildland fires, but to other emergency calls as well. Currently, GFD has on their inventory three pumper trucks, one water tender, and five forestry fire trucks. We have also provided GFD with numerous fire hoses and furnitures for their use in their fire stations. I, prov I provided you with a letter from then Fire Chief John Salas on our partnership with GFD outlining our support and how they benefited from this support. So if ever there's an emergency you see GFD responding with our forestry trucks, just know that we are part of that process in keeping the public safe. And by the way, my staff are certified wildland firefighters and are, but are not under the law enforcement uh, compensation plan. And as we know, we have two distinct seasons on, on Guam right? We've got the dry season, we've got the rainy season. Each present challenges in managing our natural resources. During the dry season, fires run rampant throughout the island, destroying our native vegetation and exposing soils. In our rainy season, because there are no vegetation to capture rainwater in their branches and leaves, water works its way downstream unmitigated, causing flooding, damaging property and infrastructure. Exposed soils are transported to our river streams, eventually into our coastal and marine preserves. We have seen in recent months the closure of the Ugam treatment plant due to high turbidity. So we are out there proactively conducting reforestation work in the urban landscape and in the rural landscapes to mitigate this, these problems. This October, we're celebrating Arbor Month. We invite all of you guys to attend, please. And we have planned a number of events throughout the island with the kickoff event on October 13th at Ipau Beach and two others in the Marisa and Manel Gay areas, as I, as I uh, referenced earlier, earlier in my testimony. The, in, in the installation of trees in strategic areas, we have an opportunity to address the soil erosion, flooding, and fires that are constant occurrence throughout the island. Our federal counterparts, the Forest Service, is very supportive of the work we are doing and the local partnerships we have formed and are committed to our programs by providing funding and technical support in the form of training on tree care maintenance, invasive species identification, and wildland fire suppression. When these, training, when these trainings become available, we do open up these opportunities to our partner, partner agencies as appropriate. These are just a small example of the work, collaboration, and partnerships that we address, that we do to address the issues that are affecting our people and our natural resources. There are still more to do, 
and we have an opportunity to continue to, to expand this work, but we need your support, and this could be realized by the passing of this bill. The individuals affected are good, hardworking men and are truly dedicated to our mission and mandates. When these guys come into work, they always have a smile on their face and are excited to go out and execute the work they do. Sometimes I wonder what's wrong with these guys. You know, they go out, they're exposed to the elements, working up, walking up and down rough and uneven terrains from the southern mountain range to the city bay valley. These are the extreme conditions they're exposed to and still come to work with the enthusiasm and dedication to get the job done. In my 30 years of working in this government, this is probably the second time I've worked with a group of people that are all on the same page with one another and they get along well with one another and I hope to continue to do so moving forward. And in closing, I hope I convey the importance of the work that these men do every day in support of our community as it relates to public safety and the protection and enhancement of our natural resource. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you very much, Mr. Marcus, for your testimony this afternoon. Mr. Regis? Buenas and half a day, Committee Chairperson, Senator Rory Spicio for Agriculture. Chairperson, um, Senator Frank Ogden for Public Safety, Distinguished Senators Underwood and Senator Rodriguez. I am Conservation Officer Mike Rages. I am um, currently the Supervisor for the Law Enforcement Section, and I am here to offer testimony in support of Bill 17633. As a Law Enforcement Supervisor, one of my, gr one of my greatest challenges is manpower availability, ensuring that there are adequate amounts of Conservation Officers in the field to carry out our enforcement efforts. The loss of these three limited term conservation officers recruits come September 30th of 2015 would severely impact my patrol operations and leaving five full-time conservation officers to actually enforce the natural resources for the territory. Um, the department as well as the section has invested hundreds of hours training these officers or limited term officers to become fully functional officers. Um, they have made numerous arrests for fish and game violations, investigated complaints, responded to calls from the public regarding violations. They are a valuable asset to the section as well as the department. And I cannot afford to lose them come September 30th, 2015. In closing, I am in support of the bill's intent which continues the service of these three limited term appointees without, dis without disruption in service and to admit them into the classified service of the government of Guam. I make myself available to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you very much, Mr. Regis. And because we do have your ASO here, we'll go ahead and ask the uh, senators if I chance they have any follow-on questions. But thank you very much for your testimony this afternoon. Senator Rodriguez? Yeah, no. uh, just a quick statement in regards to how this process can proceed forward, because I do understand that, I mean, we all understand that we're still maybe a week, week and a half out from the conclusion of this fiscal year. Now, it's very timely if in fact the legislature is able to go into session and address this before the end of the fiscal year. But like was done uh, previously, if in fact it breaks out into the next FY, then we certainly will push to, to try to expedite uh, consideration by the legislative body. The intent here behind expediting this public hearing, uh, Mr. Director, and to everyone who's here, is to ensure that not only do we bring this issue to the forefront, we recognize it, but that you also understand that the legislature is behind all of our employees who are presently in these positions. We, the commitment was made last year when then Senator Rodriguez had introduced similar legislation and it was added into the budget to allow for the carryover of these individuals in the uh, limited term capacity. I guess my, my one question would be, as we allow this additional extension for another year, can we get perhaps some level of commitment from you, Mr. Director, if it's not too much to ask, uh, having, perhaps not having approached the front office, but I'd like to see these individuals classified, made permanent, because that was the intent last year. And right now, a full year has turned, turned full circle. You have not been in that position the entire fiscal year, so I'd, we'd like to see if by any chance we can get some level of commitment that the legislature will allow this limited term uh, continuation of our conservation officers and the additional personnel and that at least on your end you'll be able to try to work with the front office to see what you can do to get them classified and permanent because the, we heard about the requirement you also shared with us about the requirement in terms of enforcing the natural resources laws. Right. Uh, yeah, yes, Senator, and, and I, I do appreciate, you know, the uh, introduction of this bill. 
uh, yes, with this bill uh, to carry them over uninterrupted service and not to repeat previous what what happened previously. Again, we appreciate your efforts on this. And yes, I am committed as a director to make sure they are classified. Uh, I've been working closely with my ASO, Ms. Antonia Santos, and we're, we're going to work diligently on this and also communicate with the uh, new senators and the front office. So everybody's going to be on the same sheet as we go along. We will give you updates. Okay. And uh, again, thank you for this opportunity. And my goal is not to repeat. It's a challenge every fiscal year. What do we, where do we go? Where do we get the funds? Is there a budget cut? So I do not want to re repeat this. Thank you. Well, I just want to say that because they're already occupying these positions, the funding is already there. And the legislature, uh, barring any major financial crisis, has yet to terminate employees. So, I mean, you can al almost be assured that going into the next FY and then subsequent fiscal years that the funding for these particular positions will continue to remain there. And we just need to, to have you work with the front office to see what you can do to expedite this. But your commitment is, is very much appreciated, Mr. Director. There's only so much you can do, right. but, but you have the commitment at least from this end uh, on, on behalf of myself and the sponsors of the legislation, and I'm sure Senator Underwood uh, would concur that in this case, allowing these individuals to continue on uninterrupted into the next fiscal year, I think is critical, and then, then giving you that opportunity to be able to classify them. Right, right. And okay, with the budget so. that's appropriated, it, it, it's actually a two phase, uh, not to, no interruption of service, and in the meantime, put that uh, classification uh, in place. So all the, the the figure here is incorporated in the two phases. Thank you very much, Mr. Director. Senator Special. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Before you uh, dismiss this panel and go on to the next, I I wanted to uh, state for the record, uh, particularly the individuals who stand to um, uh, have this period of uncertainty become certain if this bill passes and signed into law, that the director, uh, the new director, has been uh, very uh, committed. Uh, to seeing uh, this this particular issue resolved. I can't uh, thank the governor enough for appointing you, uh, Director Sablan, to be at Agriculture, and you've been there uh, well after the budget was submitted uh, for the upcoming uh, fiscal year, but you did uh, bring this to our attention, and I want to recognize also yourself and Senator Rodriguez for uh, having this bill before us. I, I think a difference between this bill and what Senator Rodriguez was able to do in the last budget cycle was you, in the last budget cycle, uh, through his efforts, we were able to continue them on an LTA basis. This bill is different because they would automatically go from LTA to classified. And we talked about that and we agreed um, as senators, as legislature, that, that doing something like this uh, should not be done in the budget process, uh, only because it's very different from what was done uh, last time. If we we're going to continue the status quo, that's one thing. But this bill will do far better, uh, and this is what Senator Rodriguez is trying to do, which is why uh, he introduced the bill we co-sponsored, and we're having a public hearing right now to uh, discuss the merits. I want to also point out that uh, that come September, October 1st, uh, they will be able, right, Director, to continue in a limited term capacity. Funding will still be there. And then should this bill pass, I think Speaker's going to call us into session uh, mid-October, should this bill pass and the governor signs into law, then certainly, as Senator Rodriguez points out in this bill, that the eight uh, forestry aid, uh, aides and the three conser conservation officers will just it'll have a seamless transition. Th that's correct, Senator. What we plan to do, if we can get them from limited term to limited term, and then while during that process, we're going to be working on with BBMR to see how we can classify them, but not terminating them. But I wanted to point that out, uh, Tony. So, Miss Tony, so they, the individuals here know uh, why it wasn't uh, really imperative or time sensitive that this be entertained in the budget process. You know, the budget process contains whole sorts of uh, uh, issues that identifies the governor's priorities, the legislature's priorities. And to put something like this in a budget bill uh, might have just made it harder for for this thing to go forward. And so I appreciate um, also Senator Rodriguez recognizing that that it's better we do it outside the Budget Act uh, so they can have a fair shake at uh, 
this initiative that center is trying to propose. That's, that's right. Just so you know, because it was mentioned that come October 1st, you'll lose these individuals. Correct. Just to make it perfectly clear, come October 1st, you will not lose these individuals. They would remain um, LTA, and then uh, uh, through the efforts here in the legislature, uh, everything could be applied uh, retroactively. Chief, are you okay with that explanation? Yes, I, I just got one other one other question, if you don't mind. Okay. Uh, on the verbiage, uh, it says up to eight four straight position. Is there a can what was the rationale instead of just saying just eight eight positions? Up to eight, because in that particular case, there were well, there are eight individuals in that that position. We wanted to ensure that it, okay. it highlighted that and it recognized that, but. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we can change the verbiage. That, that's a concern that was brought to our attention by the director uh, a couple of days back, that perhaps we should just highlight eight conservation positions. But initially, the information that was disseminated to to us was that and number. Just to eliminate uh, any, any form of interpretation on, on, on that issue. But and also, if, if the thing is enacted and there's only six incumbents, then that's probably why Senator Rodriguez put up to eight. But it it's not less than eight. It's not more than eight. It's... That's okay. right. Because okay. if, if the time comes and there's only six warm bodies, then someone might say, oh, wait a minute, we cannot implement this because it says eight, but there's only six. I see, I see. Yeah, so I... So you have that flexibility. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I just want to close by uh, uh, thanking uh, you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, Senator Rodriguez, and Senator Underwood, and others that have been involved in this process, and to just underscore the director's commitment, and just so that it's not misunderstood that when you leave here today, come October 1st, that you're, you would still be in the same uh, limited term capacity, but that should this bill be passed and signed into law, uh, everything will be seamless. And, and this bill, we would still need to um, uh, provide the funding at some point in the fiscal year. Just I know that I also want to make it clear that an additional uh, 367,000 from your existing budget doesn't mean you have an extra 367,000. No, but in right. in the spot in the spot within, within the department's budget. Yeah, yeah but budget. It, but it, you would have a shortfall. Yeah. But I just and I, in the in the Senator Rodriguez's for thinking, you know, getting the authorization is 99.9% .9 of the battle. <laughs> and the true. governor will always be able to step forward and use his transfer authority and and that's where the director's strength comes in. And the, the governor also saying that he believes that his revenue estimates are going to be higher than what the legislature adopted. And when that time comes, there would be an opportunity for a supplemental budget, and the authorization is here, and the funding will will just flow. Uh, so it's kind of like a multi-pronged approach to uh, making their period of uncertainty uh, more certain so they can finally be classified and take advantage of the training man that you talked about. So just want to let everybody know what the what the game plan is and what the goal is uh, and that there's no um, misunderstandings or and I appreciate you saying that we don't have 367,000 what would but you understand too what the, um, what the next 12 months are going to have to Correct. be like yeah in order for these individuals thank yes, you sir. mr. chairman thank you very much senator Vespicio. and and just to add to those comments to all of you who are impacted by this piece of legislation you know uh, just understand the nature of the conversation is that in fact you continue your employment with the government of Guam uninterrupted come October 1st and then we'll work with the director through Senator Rodriguez's legislation to be able to work on classifying all of you. So that's the intent behind this particular measure. So Mr. Director and to everyone, thank you very much for your testimony this afternoon. I'd like to invite the following individuals, Mr. Mark Ugger, <coughs> Roland Kirigua, Bell Soliv Soliva, and Chris Castro, please. Okay. Okay. If I can also invite the following individuals, Gage Santos and Daniel Anderson. Okay, gentlemen, if you can identify yourself for the record and then proceed with your testimony, we'll start with Mr. Ogun. Well, it's an off day. Um, I'm Sergeant Mark Ogun. I'm the Operations Sergeant for the Law Enforcement Section. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to thank you for uh, taking the time to consider our position within the Department of Agriculture. 
uh, right now uh, we are in dire straits. Dire straits, and I mean really bad, uh, in regards to enforcement and responding to the public's needs and protecting our natural resources. Uh, as you can see right here, I have two of the LTAs in front right here and one of my senior guys. The rest have other uh, commitments right now. One ha cannot be here because his wife had surgery. The other one has to go run and take care of his daughter because the wife works. What am I left with? This is a problem that's been happening for a long time and it needs to be addressed. Um, I don't want to go back and re rehash what my boss has already explained to you, but I will tell you this. Since we brought these guys on board, since the time that they actually started working, they've actually already accumulated 16 cases regarding uh, violations to Guam law. The most current one, and this is the one I'm so far most proud of, we actually apprehended criminal, uh, career criminals in this last one. One happens to be a pedophile. One happens to be a illegal arms dealer slash dr uh, bomb maker. And then the other one is a beyond control criminal. We do not just do natural resource. We are out there to protect the public as well. Our hours of operation is none other than the same as everybody else. We work the, 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 the gaga hours per se. And we were the ones that go out there and we look at these parts and look for these people that attack people that are trying to do uh, exercise or get, you know, just take the time on their personal time to be away. All of a sudden they have a perpetrator on them. We are the guys in the shadows. That's how we work. But I'm losing ground. I'm, I too am in the position to retire, so is my boss. Where is the experience, the guy that's going to take over and train these guys when we're gone? Basically, we're putting them in harm's way because they have no leadership, senior leadership, because of this problem. It's been happening for a long time. So I'm really grateful that you took the time today to hear us and heed the call that we need guys desperately. And we're not just three. We need more. We need more guys. The last, uh, the last guys that I have left that are, that are 24 years never got promoted. Where's the fairness in that? Where's the fairness? You need to go home and sleep on that. These guys are, are they, I don't know how we're, we're still here. I moved up once in 24 years. Our classmates, Guam Police Department guys that I graduated with, moved three or four times. So why? Why are we not treated equal? We don't understand that. But today's fight is for these guys to stay on so that Guam's natural resources are protected. We work with forestry. We are arson investigators for the forestry. We have 17 core mandates. We do everything. We don't have a criminal uh, section. We don't have an investigative section. We don't have an evidence processing section. We do it all. We don't go home until the whole process is done. And that where in lie is is where the government loses. You give us so little people to work with, you pay overtime. Why? Give me more guys, I can work three shifts. And we would cut that down drastically, cover more area. In closing, I will tell you this, that you're not working alone. We found a way to help ourselves. Okay, right now we have a CEA, a Cooperative Enforcement Agreement with NOAA Law Enforcement. We found a way to get us the equipment we need. So we're asking you to meet us halfway. We're in the LESO program, the Law Enforcement Surface Supply down at Big Navy. We're in that too. We just got approved. So we're trying to fix ourselves, but meet us halfway. Now you need to help us give us numbers. Help us keep these guys and then move forward and give us just a little bit more. And then don't forget my colleagues, the two guys. 24 years of dedicated service and not once did they get promoted. So please look at that, Senator, and fix that problem. That's a shame. I'll be ashamed to, to, to know that. You know, you won't sleep good tonight knowing that. How did this government servant work 24 years and never get promoted? And he earned it through training, education, and experience. So please, today, all I'm going to ask now is Consider this, Bill. Fight for it. I know you have more votes to gain. Work hard to get it and help the other guys. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Mr. Ogun, for your testimony this afternoon. Yes, sir. Gentlemen, I don't think you're going to mind, but if we can mute to the young lady on the far right. Good afternoon, Senators. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Belle Suliva. I'm one of the foresters. Um, I am here to support, and um, I am almost to retire as well. And um, I am not prepared to say anything, but my boss, um, Mr. Mafnas, um, did um, say anything that we want to be here this afternoon. And those people in the front, they're our forestry aide under the LTA position. And we would want them to continue working in the forestry division of the Department of Agriculture because their services is very important. They are the people that um, go to the jungle, collect seeds, especially especially our native species, start the propagation, and provide it to the landowners. So without these people, uh, we don't have seedlings to give away free of charge under the federal uh, grants. So we really need their services and to be permanent because they also have family to feed and everything like us. So we really need their services. And as I said, I am retiring soon, so we want them to be to um, take care of the forestry division and the needs of the landowners that is doing um, good in our environment or protection of our natural resources in this island. Not only protection, but to beautify as well, because that's very important for the tourists that we are. Um, here I enjoying in our islands. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Oliva, for your testimony this afternoon. The gentleman, please identify yourself for the record. Good afternoon, Senators. Uh, my name is Gage Michael Ferran Santos. I am a uh, competitive limited term appointment uh, conservation officer recruit from the Department of Agriculture, and I am here today in support of Bill 176-33. I first heard about this position, the LTA position, back in January 2013 by uh, a fellow psychomate of mine from the Criminal Justice Academy from GCC. She was uh, actually one of the first LTAs here at the Department of Agriculture for uh, the conservation section. Um, so she told me in 2013 that there ha they have openings for the position, the LTA position. So I went and I applied for it. Um, I wasn't picked up uh, until 2014, April, was when I was picked up uh, after applying for the job and she was no longer here. She left the LTA position to pursue a permanent uh, Gulf Guam position at a DOC, so she's now a DOC guard. And uh, we still keep in touch from time to time, but uh, just the process of waiting to get hired here, you know, from hearing it in January 2013 and finally coming aboard in uh, April 2014 you know so that was a waiting process so one of my concerns was um, before uh, you clarified that we're working through October 1st uh, one of my concerns was um, if that didn't happen and you would announce the position in October 1st come October 1st uh, for uh, for a classified uh, permanent position uh, that we would have to reapply and then how long would we wait until we were selected or you know had to do the written test physical test then the interview and then when would we come aboard so that was one of my concerns but you guys can uh, uh, clarify that for me um, you know where the government has invested a lot of uh, time and money in us and um, we're here for the long haul you know just give us the opportunity uh, we you know we have a passion for the job already being here for a year and five months uh, we love it and uh, you know we're, we're here to preserve our land and our ocean for future generations to enjoy like our kids when we do have you know our grandkids you know everybody's families here so we're here to protect that and um, another thing is a lot of the uh, the older guys the senior guys are, are right there are they're on their way out you know retirement they have a lot of knowledge that uh, we can gain from them uh, without their guidance you know we kind of be you know we'll be struggling out there um, there's a few guys in the military as well 
there they get called for deployments and to serve our country and then you're left with the two guys that are not you know in the military if you know we didn't have a position so we're here and we want to work um also, also the the manpower out there we, we we've come across big groups big fishing groups you know they're armed they have knives they have uh, spear guns and then the poaching community you know of course they're armed with shotguns crossbows handguns assault rifles and you know these groups they there's up to like maybe four of them maybe more and you have two three officers responding to that call without any backup so you know that's an issue too officer safety um never done this before so you know it's my first time uh but yeah i'm, I'm, I'm in support of the bill and uh, thank you for the support everybody and uh yeah i'm here for the long haul thank you very much mr santos good afternoon uh, senators my name is um daniel anderson i'm uh currently a lta for a conservation se section um the guys pretty much already explained uh, the crisis we're in and uh, the importance of our natural resources and um i just want to i just want to say that i'm young and i don't have kids right now but when i do have kids i want them to see the the i want them to be able to fish and where there is fish i want them to be able to see uh how beautiful the island is and uh, without without uh, us conservation recruits and the forestry aids that won't happen because of the fact that uh you got the you got the watershed and um you got these uh, illegal fishing in the preserves without the preserves fish have nowhere to go and reproduce so um that's that's a really important thing and um like officer santos said it's my first time too so i'm nervous but uh i'm doing my best so um since we, since I've started here, um, we we worked hard to to get to where we're at right now. Um, I was fresh out of high school. I joined the academy um, instead of hanging out with my friends, having fun. You know, I wanted to work hard because I wanted to be in law enforcement. I wanted to uh, to protect the public. And um, when when I joined the academy, my two top choices were customs and conservation. I happened to uh, get lucky and get one of them. So. Um, natural resources, natural resources is really important to to me, as well as the island, and um, that's it. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Anderson, for your testimony. Mr. Castro. Good afternoon, senators. Um, Officer Castro, conservation. Um, for the past few weeks, I've been working with uh, uh, at least uh, with the three uh, LTAs that we have for conservation, and. They've been sitting on pins and needles, and I, I could only imagine the, the forestry aid. And uh, I'd just like to uh, thank you for, for the support for, for these individuals, because without the clarification that Senator Respicio just gave, a lot of them are stressing out. I mean, I've seen one of them, like, like uh, they, they could not even think on a daily basis, losing sleep, losing weight. I mean, seeing that from a person and as a colleague, you know, it concerns me. And now that you've given them that, that 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 hope, you know, it, it's really inspiring, and I I thank you for that. Um, you know, I like to keep things simple, but um, these uh, three individuals that I work with, uh, Officer Rios, Officer Anderson, Officer uh, Santos, they busted their butts off for for the for for the time that they were working here. I mean, we we ra ran them through the ringer. They, they even did officer survival um, course through the water, and that's something that I wouldn't want to repeat myself. So you know, I mean, like if if we're gonna keep them, that that's absolutely great. Because if we were to retrain new folks, I don't think that they, that 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 they have the fortitude that these uh, three individuals showed. And I just like like to express my uh, gratitude and thank you. Cool. Thank you, Officer Castro, Officer Anderson, Officer Santos, and uh, Officer Elgin. And Ms. Oliva, thank you for your testimony. You, you pull the mic, did you want? Yes, sir, I, I just want to say one more thing uh, before I get up here. Uh, not only do you, did you hear coming from their hearts, you know, not, nothing rehearsed, um, 
We asked them to come if they wanted to, give them the opportunity to fight for themselves. Uh, at the same time, we will promise to come up here too and, and fight for them. But the other thing I want to address to this community too is, not only is it about this situation here, what you leave me with if this does not happen, overloaded work workforce of five guys for the whole island. There's just no way. Then what is it going to say? We have communities out there that will stand up and say, we're not doing our job. Bring it to you, another headache, go around. That's happening already. So we're trying to stop that process. We need these guys and more. We do. Seriously. The time we spent training them, the money that we spent training them, the response to the community, like Ms. Diaz said, we get calls all the time. As soon as I parked my car in the garage last night, I got a call on my cell phone, my personal phone, which I give out as a response, and requesting for CO to go down to Mariso, their net fishing, which is illegal. Where am I going to? I'm so ashamed to call their wives and say, can I get gauge? It's just too much. We need help. So I don't know how much more I have to tell you. So please, uh, think about this, fix it, and then help us some more. It's not, it's not yet over. Sorry to say, it's just not over yet. Mr. Chairman, very quickly, uh, I just want to say that the existing authority to allow you to continue as an LTA was through Senator Rodriguez's um, current law. Uh, what he's proposing here is better than what we were thinking about with the director and the ASO, so you have the existing authority, and if this thing goes through, it'll put you in a better position. And I wanted to uh, clarify that and underscore that, and make sure come October 1st that none of you are going to be going to the governor's office or going to any of our offices asking what happened. You heard the director and the ASO say that from, from now until this bill passes and hopefully becomes law, uh, nothing should change. Right, director? Okay. And what Senator Rodriguez is proposing is far better than what we ever talked about. Right, Director? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much again, gentlemen. And, and just to reiterate, you know, this is the second time we're going through this entire process of extending the limited term positions into the next FY. So you already have the commitment of 75% of the members of the legislative body by virtue of that action last year. And I said 75% because we have four wonderful new colleagues who joined the 33rd Guam legislature, and you have one to my immediate left. And I don't envision any concerns with regards to passing this legislation, allowing the director to continue to retain his resources, and allowing these men to continue to contribute to the community through their efforts. What we'd like to do is if, if Mr. Director, um, two things. One is, first of all, thank you very much for allowing your people to be able to testify. I think that that speaks volumes about your leadership within the department, allowing your respective employees to be able to testify on legislation that could impact them or could impact their divisions or their sections. So thank you very much on that note. Secondly is, Mr. Director, there's a side issue that was just mentioned by Officer Ogun, and I don't want it to leave this public hearing without being recognized. If by any chance you can work with the chairman or uh, myself or any of the senators, Senator Rodriguez or Senator Underwood or any of the senators in the, in the legislature, so that we can work on that promotional structure that you need in the law enforcement. Because really, 24 years, an individual not being merited, and I literally say merited with a promotional opportunity within 24 years, you know, that, that says something about what we need to do to visit the structure that you have for your law enforcement division yeah okay so so we will work with you and please we need your cooperation and, and the support of the front office and thank you for recognizing that mr. director thank you gentlemen and mr. Lever thank you very much for your testimony if I can invite now uh, mr. Roland Kirigua miss Angelita Mignola senator Hope Cristobal and Nathan Rios. Once again, Roland Kirigua, Angelita Mignola, Senator Hope Cristobal, Nathan Rios, and Enrique Sal Salas, please. If you don't want to testify, it's okay. But at least you signed in and just signify and let me know if in fact you would not, did not want to testify. 
Okay, if Mr. Solis is not going to join us, then I'd like to invite uh, Sean Diaz. If Sean is in the audience, you're good? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Bruno Cases, you're good? Okay, and is it Rudy? Bobby? Rudy. Okay, but we do have you noted, so thank you very much, gentlemen, for signing in. Just let me call one other individual, Albert Lohan. You good? Okay, Paul Cabana. And then Shane Munya. Okay, thank you very much for signing in, gentlemen, and, and signifying that, in fact, you support this particular measure. And uh, we can yield to Ms. Minjola. Thank you. Um, half a day, my name is Angelita Mindiola, and I'm the chairperson of the Guam Southern Soil and Water Conservation District. And I hereby submit this testimony in support of Bill 17633. We sincerely appreciate the legislature's acknowledgement and support of the importance of Guam's natural resources. As it stands now, the Soil Water Conservation District is always working closely with various agencies such as the Department of Education, the University of Guam, the Mayor's Council, the Department of Agriculture, EPA, NRCS, FSA, and many others as well as with the legislature itself on a host of many projects in pursuit of finding the balance between development and protection of all of our island natural resources for our future generation. Without going into all the details of the readily apparent cultural and economic importance of our natural resources, I'm here today to voice my support of any measure to further strengthen the capabil cap capabilities of our government and people to protect those vital resources. As you can imagine, we have strong ties and partners with forestry in the conservation and preservation of our island natural resources. We have been working together with other partners to help address the Ugam watershed problem by planting native trees on the ridges upstream. Together with students from Salmon Sanchez, we even surveyed the uh, Atati area in Inorohan to identify native trees and to assess the soil erosion caused by feral ungulate. These students had real field experience to identify various native trees, collected seeds, and planted them at the forestry uh, nursery. With this, we plan to help prevent soil erosion. Hopefully, the plants will help regulate water flow as well as help filter the water going downstream. These are the kinds of community efforts that we naturally improve water quality feeding our Ugam watershed so that Iran will have clean water and water during raining uh, season. This is just a single example of the work we do. The work needed to protect our forests is overwhelming. Not only do they have challenges from feral ungulate, inconsiderate destruction of forests to make way for urbanization, typhoon, and most especially the burning of trees by arsonists who think they are hunters are just a few of the challenges forestry faces to protect and preserve our natural resources. Forestry, forestry also part participates in education outreach activities sponsored by the other partners. Favorable support to staff the forestry division and of course the uh, aquatic uh, division as called for in Bill 17633 is important and necessary to provide further support to continue for and continue continuity of work being done to help protect our natural resources, God's regard to us. After all, our trees provide the oxygen we need to survive, provide the food for our people, and are the literal beauty of our beautiful island. We can't live without our forests. Your favorable support is, is a mark of your legacy to protect and preserve our natural resources for the livelihood of our people. Thank you. Honorable Senators, for this opportunity to provide this testimony in support of Bill 17633. And I'm really inspired by the, um, the aquatic uh, limited term employees. I saw and saw the forestry limited term employees. They have dedicated so much of their time and their passion to help our island 
protect our natural resources for this generation and future generation. And I'm happy to state that the um, to the, I mean that Director Sablan and Deputy Director Pelican are doing a great job. We have been really communicating and planting, planning a lot of activities to revisit. Uh, so I'm really, really uh, uh, happy. And your support fuels my passion to continue working for the protection of our natural resources. Thank you very much, and I applaud you for taking um, your time to pay attention to the needs of of uh, the agriculture limited term people. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Mendiola. Senator Cristobal? Oh, you to my boss, <laughs> <laughs> the chairman of my board. Sidzus Masi, Mr. Chairman, half a day, all members of the uh, committee. Senator Rodriguez, thank you for introducing the bill and sponsors, uh, including Senator Underwood, who is here really uh, in support, I'm sure. I am Hope Alvarez Cristobal, um, former senator of your august body. I am currently an elected board member of the Northern Guam Soil and Water Conservation District. I'm here to testify in support of Bill 176-33 LS, an act to add a new item 5 to subsection O of section 1, chapter 5 of public law 33-66, relative to the classification of personnel vital to the protection of Guam's natural resources. This bill obviously aims to make permanent the indicated positions at the Government of Guam's Department of Agriculture, a line agency uh, within the Forestry Division. In order to fulfill its mandate, especially uh, its obligations within the Forestry Division, the Department of Agriculture must realize the full support of the legislature in funding and creating these permanent positions in order to build capacity within the department. As a partner, the Northern Guam Soil and Water Conservation Board works in consonance with the Department of Agriculture in Soil and Water Stewardship and Conservation, which includes outreach efforts in the community. In particular, the Forestry Division reports to our board, um, or have been reporting to our board, about their work in forestry conservation and protection that in turn supports the creation of more productive and sustainable agricultural lands on island. As you know, much of the care of our island environment has to do with the work done by the Forestry Division. And to demonstrate uh, all the myriad of work and the difficulty of work uh, involved in, with this division, um, we need to recognize that forests provide buffer zones for non-point source pollution. They reduce erosion. They also protect aquatic environments and they enhance wildlife and biodiversity in our small island ecosystem. And with the increased intensity and number of storms due to climate change becoming more common, and the landscape changes caused by unnatural increase of our island's population, with housing developers eyeing forests and potential agricultural lands for their bulldozers, the increase in subdivisions, roads, parking areas, especially in the northern part of Guam where many of our agricultural products are grown on farms and ranches, and with the U.S. military coveting pristine forest areas and lands for themselves, the Forestry Division will no doubt be playing a major role in addressing the greater work of conservation and preservation of our island's natural resources. As a member of the Northern Guam Soil and Water Conservation Board, I fully support the work of the Department of Agriculture and in particular the Forestry Division. We have been lately laying the groundwork on a collaborative project to restore and revitalize a former buffer or fragment forest to its original state by doing, um, by planning conservation work which will enhance the quality of our soil and water. Of direct value to residents will be the aesthetic pleasure of having a forest in an urban setting and open space for the enjoyment of our own island residents. 
this is but one tiny project that requires the support of Forestry Division with properly funded staff, something that can happen uh, with your support for this bill. I thank you for seeing the forest from the trees and voting for this bill. Sidus Masi. Thank you very much, Senator Cristobal. And Mr. Kirigua, thank you for allowing the ladies to provide the testimony mission. I've learned. <laughs> um, my name is Roland Kirua and I'm with the University of Guam Cooperative Extension Service as well as the Northern Soil and Water Conservation District. Um, Chairman and, and Senators, for us, um, I'd like to just say that I'm here to testify on the need to enhance the Department of Agriculture. I have seen a number of threats to our natural resources. Many of you know me for the work that I'm doing with the rhino beetle. And that all stemmed from the Department of Agriculture lacking the resources to do their mandates. And so we as partners have come together to help augment them. And now at a time where the Department of Agriculture is coming up from the ashes is not the time to pull the rug from beneath them. I can tell you that I have worked with the Division of Forestry for a number of years. And whenever there is a project that the Department of Agriculture, not only the Forestry Division, but also the Conservation uh, uh, Unit, work together in order to build up, to protect, to grow these plants. But some, once you put them in the ground, it's not the time to turn them away. It, you, it, that's when, once you plant the seed, that's the beginning. And that's where the conservation officers come in. Now, need I remind you that we have been experiencing storms on an average of about once every 30 days. We're in a El Nino year. And these guys from Department of Ag Forestry have gone out there and they have planted trees to protect the shorelines, to ensure shoreline uh, uh, resiliency. And even when those storms have washed them away, they come back and they do it again. Because it's not because it's their job, but it's because we cannot afford to lose any of that precious soil. And even more, it is that trees there that's protecting the marine environment that everyone so values. So what I'd like to ask you is to support this and to think of the conservation officers and the forestry aides in a holistic sense of part of the solution to protecting our natural resources. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Kiriwa. Nate. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. Hello, Senators. I am here today. I am conservation. I'm a limited term conservation officer recruit Nathan Reese. I am one of them that's affected with this bill. Such a challenge coming up with these. <laughs> but back you I I I just became speechless with everything right now. So. Pretty much everything has been said what I wanted to say. And all I can do is just thank everybody that's here for the support that you guys are giving us for Bill 17633. Um, Senator Rodriguez, I really want to thank you very much for helping us. And um, I am one of the oldest of the three that's, that are here in our cycle. And I understand that this, this is a very, very pertinent thing for us. This is our, our career. And I thank you very much for helping us and, and seeking, you know, there, there's nothing else I could say about it. I mean, I'm so, I'm so happy to see everybody here to support, especially our two, my two supervisors, who only testified, it, testified twice in front of this body. And I thank them very much for supporting us, and I thank you. And like I said, there's, there's nothing else I could say. I mean, we've seen everybody's testimony, heard everyone's testimony, and right now I'm just, I, I cannot say anything anymore. I just want to thank you very much for it. Thank you very much, Officer uh, Rios. Thank you very much, folks, for your testimony this afternoon. Yes, Ms. Minjola. If we could ask the um, um, temporary employees to please stand up so we can give them a round of applause for being patient. Please. And soaking all the knowledge to protect our um, environment. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you very much, Mrs. Mendola and, and Mr. Director, and to all of your personnel that came out, and also the addition representative, Senator Cristobo, thank you very much for providing your testimony. And it's good to see, it's really uh, heartwarming to see that, in fact, your personnel are given that flexibility to provide testimony through this legislative process. So I once again recognize that. And, and gentlemen, thank you very much for coming out and advocating for this particular legislation. We'll see what we can do to get it reported out as quickly as possible and then allow the legislative process to proceed. But I want to thank Senator Rodriguez for the introduction of the legislation and working with uh, the director and also Mr. Director for working with your oversight chair over the Department of Agriculture. Thank you very much, folks. Have a good evening.